Welcome to RSA Conference 2024. We're here recording live from Broadcast Alley in Moscone West. This interview is sponsored by Silverfort. I'm your host, Adrian Sanabria, and joining me for this interview today is Head Kovitz, CEO and co-founder of Silverfort. How are you doing today? Uh, great. Thank you for uh, having me here. Yeah, absolutely. So identity, we're talking about identity today uh, and the role identity plays in nearly every attack, including ransomware. Uh, I think everybody is, is fairly familiar yeah. with, uh, with identity's role in, in attacks. You know, we focus on things like uh, uh, security awareness, phishing testing, you know, trying to make sure that it's, it's not one of the entry points. You know, I'm sure it's not the only at the entry that identity matters, right? Yeah. You know, but... Um, I am is an interesting space. Uh, if you look at all the cybersecurity vendors, the most vendors are in the identity space. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, so, so why is that? Why is identity uh, so big? Uh, I, th I think it's a huge problem, and I also think that over time it's becoming a bigger and bigger element of, of enterprise security. Um, I think one of the reasons is because you know these days where people are working from anywhere, right? So they're not just working from the office. They can work from anywhere in the world. They can use any device. Doesn't have to be a corporate device, right? So if you think about it, identity is really becoming like the last line of defense, mm -hmm. right? If, if I can log in from anywhere in the world using any device, as long as I can prove that it's me, right. and I'm part of your corporate environment now, I can access anything, um, then identity really became in many ways uh, critical. Uh, but over the years, for some reason, we weren't able to bring it to a point where it's secure enough. Yeah. Even though there's so many solutions, as you said, yeah. um, still in the majority of data breaches, identity is compromised, both for the initial login and for then moving laterally inside the mm -hmm. network. Uh, so I think we still need to do more as an industry in order to, to solve that problem because it is becoming huge. And, and there are some huge identity providers out there. Um, so... Why is it, uh, you know, just I if you use, I guess it's Entra ID now, it used to be yeah. Azure ID, uh, or something like Okta, you know, and, and these companies have done some acquisitions, but, um, but uh, are, are, are those enough? You know, why, why do we see, or why would a company want to use more than one identity solution? So, interestingly, all of these are our partners for us. Uh, oh, okay. The way we view uh, the identity space is that the vendors you just named and a few others, they are all the identity infrastructure providers, right? Mm -hmm. they, they manage your identity itself. Right, the directories, yeah. And, and they also provide security for their own environment, right? For mm -hmm. Entra, for Okta, for uh, Ping. Mm -hmm. The problem is that it's only securing that island, that silo, right? In a way, it's almost like um, if you would buy endpoint security from uh, Lenovo and HP and Apple individually, mm -hmm. right? And it only secures Lenovo computers. Right. I think that people understand now that identity requires a more um, holistic treatment for security. Mm -hmm. So people are still going to have those hybrid identity infrastructure, right? Like on-prem, cloud, maybe multiple clouds. But I do think that there's a need for a security platform that secures identity across all these silos. And that really is what we built and why we actually partner with these vendors. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And... Um yeah, I think a couple of years ago we got the sense uh, with MFA that that was going to solve a lot of these problems. Why, why didn't it? I still think MFA is a very important piece, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think MFA alone is not enough. Uh, people unfortunately make the mistakes of you know, approving their MFA even if it's not really them. Um, we've seen a lot of these kind of attacks, right, mm -hmm. by groups like uh, Lapsus and others where they trick someone into approving MFA. Right, uh, Scattered Spider did the same and others. Um, and also, there are a lot of cases where it's just not the answer. Think about, for example, non-human identities. There's, there's no person to actually click right. on, on MFA approval. So I think that identity security is really becoming a combination of many uh, capabilities, right? You got multi-factor authentication, you have privilege access management, you got security for non-human right. identities. Uh, you got what's now called ITDR, Identity Threat Detection yeah, and Response, yep, right? Yep. Where it's more on the on the SOC side of detecting these threats and responding to them. Um, there's all these different solutions that until now were just point solutions. You would buy MFA from one vendor and PAM and uh, ITDR, 
And what we're trying to do is we're trying to consolidate identity security into one platform that has all these capabilities and I think more importantly, applies them across all those islands where security until now was, was siloed, right? On-prem, Active Directory, you know, cloud, and with all the different cloud providers you got over there. Um, it's really about unifying identity security so that it will become more effective. Yeah. yeah and it, you know, I've noticed one of the issues that, that we often see with identity is, you know, 80%, 90%, maybe even 99% of the accounts get secured, you know, but it, if, if you're missing one or two, yeah. you know, that, that's as good as 100 Right, you know, like how, how do we how do we address that problem where, uh, you know, maybe MFA is deployed, it doesn't hit 100%. Uh, you know, especially in large organizations, you know, how how do how do we address that? I think you are hitting a very important problem. Uh, identity security, I think, is is complex. Right, it's one of the most difficult uh, projects usually. Yeah. So implementing MFA for a few users that easy, but really getting to all of them that's yeah. pretty hard. Same with PAM solutions, right? Yeah. Impacts Onboarding every a few employee. few users, you can, yeah. but really getting to all those admins, not just tier zero, but all of these admins, mm -hmm. that's tough. Non-human identities like service accounts, that's many organizations almost consider to be impossible. Yeah. So because of these challenges, people are spending years, lots of budgets, as, as you know, right, lots of vendors, and still don't fully solve those problems. There are still a lot mm -hmm. of these users, systems that are left outside because it's too difficult to onboard them or because of budget or because you know, of legacy systems that don't support any modern identity security. I think that until we get to all these blind spots and really solve identity security everywhere, it's never going to be effective because it's like locking the door but leaving the window open, right? Yeah. Yes, you secured your VPN with MFA, but I can still log in another way or maybe you protect right. remote desktop, but I can still use a command line tool to log into the same resource. Yeah. Or, 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 sti or still account. an OAuth key. Exactly. Yeah. So there's just so many ways until we holistically take care of identity security, attackers get to choose how to log into our systems. And as long mm -hmm. as there's one way they can do it without being seen, um, they will and, and they are today. Yeah. So we are seeing this all over. Uh, we are really trying, not just us, many vendors I think these days are trying to solve this problem of identity security. I think enterprises are becoming more aware. At least that's what we are seeing. I yeah. think... We've been around for eight years now. Um, in the beginning, people barely understood why they should even invest in this. Now I think awareness is much higher. Um, it generally, CISOs understand yeah. they need to take care of identity security. They also understand it's not just the infrastructure team's problem, but they understand it, it is part right. of security. So I think uh, we are on the right way, I hope, to solve it. But it's a difficult challenge, I think. Um, and, and, and attackers know it. That's why they target identities. Yeah. Yeah, I think most people are uh, familiar with the saying, why would I develop an exploit when I can log in? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah it's very true. Uh, I think attackers know that it's just the easiest way to get in. So you're talking about covering a lot of ground. You know, is, is, is that something uh, Silverford is doing? Or are, are you looking to, to acquire to, to do that, to cover? Because there, there's a lot of space to yeah, cover. For sure. You're talking about machine identities. Like, that's very different technology than yeah, MFA and things that are employee-facing, human-facing. Um, you know, what, what's your plan for, for creating this kind of unified identity security layer? So, so, yeah, we are going a lot, and it is a very ambitious goal, right, mm -hmm. to solve identity security overall. Um, but we, we have been building this for eight years now. We have raised uh, more than $220 million, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of it recently in a serious D round that we did um, beginning of this year, uh, $116 million. Yeah. And, and yes, part of it will be used for potentially acquiring other companies. I think there are a lot of startups doing interesting things in, in identity yeah. security today. Most of it is point solutions. You know, it's solving one uh, specific problem, but, but to me that's interesting because yeah. if I can add that to, to our platform, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and we are growing very fast in terms of just the, um, the business, right? We're growing more than 100% year over year. We're adding more than 100 customers every quarter now. Some of them wow. are the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. So I think we're getting to a point which I, I think is really a sweet spot where we are still a startup, right? So we still innovate, we still build a lot of new stuff, but we are big enough to have the resources in order to truly build a platform and not just one point solution. 
uh, potentially acquire, you know, take bigger moves, which I think are required to tackle this huge problem. Uh, so I, I do believe and hope that we will become, um, you know, the leading platform of identity security overall, not just MFA or ITDR or non-human identities, but just gen identity security in general. And I think there's a need for that. Somebody yeah. needs to solve identity security holistically. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I understand you have a research report you do. I is this an annual report that you do, yeah, or is this the first year? W we started to do it, yes. We, we intend to now do it every year. Uh, we call it uh, the Identity Underground Report, mm -hmm. because a lot of the goal is to uncover a lot of these hidden blind spots that we talked right. about, right? A lot of companies, like you said, they think they have MFA, they have PAM, they feel like maybe they're kind of covered. They don't understand that so many of their users are still you know, not using these tools, or right. maybe they're using them but are not effectively secured because of all kind of hidden permissions or yeah. legacy protocols they're still using like NTLM that you know a third of admins are still using for some reason mm -hmm. or because they're syncing their on-prem passwords to the cloud so if they have some vulnerabilities on-prem mm -hmm. an attacker can breach there and then right. use that to access the cloud as well all these blind spots people don't think about um, the goal of this report is to uncover so yeah, we, we released uh, the first one a couple of months ago. We got great feedback and we're going to continue to do more and more of these. Um, and not just the report, you know, we're thinking about doing more and more things for the identity security community, right. which I think um, for many years have been kind of neglected because people viewed identity as, as an IT or infrastructure. Right. They, they didn't really think about identity security as a, as right. a standalone category. And I think now that people are starting to uh, we definitely want to help the industry get there and, and get that uh, knowledge that it takes. Well, and I imagine if you're going to build this holistic platform, you know, e even though this is a public report, you know, this research, this data is useful for product strategy. Exactly. For understanding where those gaps are that you need to fi fill to be holistic. Exactly. So the report yeah. actually is based on data that we got from hundreds of enterprises that agreed to share data with us for research purposes. Right. And we're just using part of that data to also, you know, give back and, and share more insights with the industry. But a lot of this data and, and, and much more is used to improve our product. You know, um, today I think, especially in the AI era, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot you can do if you have enough data, right? If you really have visibility into every identity, every authentication everywhere, right? On-prem, cloud, humans, machines, everything in between you can actually get um, a huge advantage in just the insight you can get out of identities. I think that um, you know, for, for so long, identity infrastructure has been fragmented, but it doesn't mean that identity security has to be. I think mm -hmm. that identity security can become something that is much more unified, and, and I think visibility is just the first step. We need right. to understand what's out there and where are the, the blind spots. So before we wrap up uh, here today, what, what are some of the most interesting insights that came out of this report, this being the first one that you've done? So some insights have to do with the way people are, are using identities across uh, hybrid environments, right? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people understand some of the issues with on-prem Active Directory. They understand some issues in the cloud native identity provider. They don't fully understand the, the synergy between them that actually yeah. um, allows attackers to start from one of them and, and spread right. to the other, like we've seen in you know in attacks by scattered spider and in you know even the solar winds attack in a lot of different data breaches people mm -hmm. you know take advantage of on prem vulnerabilities and yeah. then just go from there to the cloud identity so part of the insight is around that you know how many people are syncing different you know passwords configurations between those environments and how does that expose you to attacks uh, some of it has to do with the use of you know legacy protocols or, or all kinds of configurations that expose you to um, you know, your password being stolen or, or to uh, lateral movement potential, mm -hmm. right? Um, so uh, a lot of things around the use of protocols that our customers, a lot of them think that uh, they got rid of, right? They got rid of NTLM V1, they got rid of clear text LDAP, but it's still there. It's so much right. of it is still there and they don't even know. Um, and a lot has to do with privileged users, you know, how privileged users are secured, uh, the fact that some people still have so many uh, shadow admins yeah. Admins that you don't really know about, but maybe you know you gave your um, help desk the ability to reset the admin's password, so effectively they can become admins as well if they if somebody steals their credentials. Th these are the kind of things that we talked about in that first report because a lot of the the goal was to just kind of set the ground 
for what is the state today so that in the next reports we can start building in terms of trends and, and yeah. where things are going, where attackers are focusing. Um, I do believe, again, that with the use of AI, attackers are going to start using identities in a way that is much more dangerous because stealing identities becomes easy with you know, AI-driven right. uh, social engineering, right? You can trick people much easier to give it to you. Uh, but then also attacks in your network will become much automated, much more automated and, and faster. So I think that um, prevention is going to play a bigger and bigger role yeah. because detection might become too slow. You know, if, if I tell you that there's a stolen identity in your network and, y you know, a few hours later you respond to that, that might not be fast enough mm -hmm. in this era. So I think a lot of these insights, we are using them now in order to power you know, more proactive or, or real-time response to, to prevent these attacks and not just to send you more alerts. I don't think the industry in general needs just more alerts, right. data. I think that it's much more about how do we take that data in real-time and we use it to, to prevent threats, yeah. and that's where, where we yeah. focus. That makes sense. Ahead, thank you so much for joining us today in, uh, on Security Weekly. And to find out more about Silverfort, visit securityweekly.com forward slash Silverfort RSAC. And uh, to, for more RSA uh, content, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash RSAC. Uh, stick around. We'll be back with another interview shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you.